play here. There we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Math Monday. It has been, I was going to say weeks, but I think it's been several months since Ryan and I have been able to, to join you live. So we'll start with some quick introductions here in case you're new to this. My name is Louis Shanafelt, and I am the product manager slash evangelist for Equatio. And we thought it would be a great idea to kind of reconnect with uh, my partner in crime here. Ryan, if you want to give a quick introduction. Sure. Thanks, Lou. Yeah, my name is Ryan Graham. I'm the CTO here at, uh, at Text Hub. And previously, and probably the last time I was doing these, I was yeah. the lead engineer for Equatio. So uh, I'm still the diehard Equatio fan. Nothing's changed there. So that's why I'm here today. Yeah, oh, that's great, Ryan. So I, we, were, we were joking last week that lots of things have changed. You know, Ryan has since got a promotion, but he still, you know, joins us for our sprint planning meetings and still has a really good grasp of all the things we're doing in Equatio. I think it was kind of his baby. So I know he's very attached Definitely. to it still. So feel free to reach out to Ryan or myself on Twitter. You know, we were talking about all the changes. Ryan got a promotion. He's now a chief technical officer, and, and I, I got more gray hair. So I did get a haircut this weekend, Ryan. So, uh, but hey, lots lots of changes uh, in the world. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to be back with you today. And we got some great questions that came in from some of the folks that are using this. And certainly learning has changed across uh, not only here in North America, but where Ryan's stationed there in, in the UK, uh, and really globally throughout the world, right, with all, this, all that's going on. So, Thrilled you're able to take some time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Maybe you're watching live. Maybe you'll you'll watch it later, kind of Netflix style. So let's start here with question number one, Ryan, that came in. How do you use the new web toolbar? So this is a great question, and I'm going to go ahead and take this question here so we can share my screen. You should be able to see, and what I thought I would do here is kind of start with something that I actually shared uh, with our sales team, and that is... If you recall, uh, several months ago, we had really just an abbreviated toolbar. So think about the ways in which you would have tried to open and use Equatio in Jamboard, for example. This was something that I know Ryan and I had seen come in probably over the course of 18 months. Hey, when can we get some math in Jamboard? You know, it's a great collaborative tool, especially with hybrid and remote learning. And when users used to be able to click on Equatio, it would really just open this abbreviated window. So we had our screenshot reader, our discovery tool, and our STEM tools. So we recognized that the abbreviated toolbar didn't really allow for math content creation. So what we wanted to do is go from, hey, the old way to the new way. So notice here in a jam, live in a jam, when you click on Equatio, you'll get a full web toolbar down at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and demo this for you here today live. But I wanted to show you that slide to kind of remind you where we've gone with it and to where we're headed. So when we look at Google Jamboard today, we go to jamboard.google.com or thereabouts. You might have this favorited if you use this a lot. So we open up a brand new jam. Go ahead and give it a title. You've got some of your tools over here for annotations. And when you click on Equatio, you no longer get that abbreviated bar that I just showed in the upper right hand corner. You now get this full web toolbar down here at the bottom. So really great because our users can use the web toolbar to create content. I still get this all the time, Ryan, like people are going, you know, hey, what's this button? Where'd that come from? So that I think they really probably just maybe didn't understand it in the former toolbar, but the discoverability button, just real quick for everybody, mine's toggled on, notice it's lit up blue. And when I click on it, it goes, you know, grayed out, right? So what this does, it actually finds math on your websites. So just know that the discoverability button, because we no longer have the toolbar up here, we've moved it down into the bottom of the web toolbar because users can use this to find math on websites and commonly used places. So let's take a quick look. We can open the web toolbar. And when we do this, we can just type in a basic algebra, algebraic expression. So something simple like this, and we can do something like this, and we can make obviously multiple lines of math. You can drag this up if you need more space. Um, but really what you do is once you click in the jam, you need to put your focus here in the jam. And when I click here, we, we should see that, you know, there's no place, there's no box, there's no focus with our mouse actually in a jam. 
So what it's going to do, it's going to insert into the jam at the same place, but then you're going to have the freedom and flexibility to move this wherever you want. You're going to use the copy math as button. We're going to give you eight opportunities to take the math out of Equatio and to be able to paste it. So watch when I select image, you're going to see a little copy button down in the bottom corner. And then I can just simply come put my focus in the jam and on a Mac, command V on a Windows device, uh, you can just do control V. So notice that when I hit, you know, the, the paste feature that it'll go right in and then I can take this and adjust this as needed. The other thing I thought would be cool to show here, Ryan, was like, uh, I don't, this probably got lost a little bit in the web toolbar update. You used to never be able to use the copy math as button for a graph. You literally had to use like a, 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 a what is it called? A cropping tool or snipping tool. So one thing that's great here is I can make a graph and I can put this in my jam if I want to. So we can just do something simple. Oops, I need to be in the graph editor. Sign of X. And then when I come over here, notice we have a copy graph as, and then we only give you the four options. So really that's the only thing you're gonna need here. Grab the image, I can collapse this, and I can easily come over and paste graphs into a jam also. So really crisp, detailed images, ways to make math inside and using this brand new web toolbar. So we gave you some examples here of using it in Jamboard, but just know it's gonna open on every single website. Other places we've enabled the web toolbar is inside of LMSs, right? With all this remote learning, let's look real quick at what this might look like inside of Canvas. So if you're an LMS customer, you might already have the Equatio LTI, which you're free and you know, feel free to continue to use the LTI, which we support. But what happens if I open the web toolbar inside of an LMS? I click on the extension, the web toolbar opens at the bottom. And again, I can just come here and make math something simple. Let's say I type in 4x squared. I'm not gonna actually solve this expression, but look right here, guys. Notice in Jamboard, we only had the copy math as button, but in Canvas, we can recognize the text editor that they're using. And all I gotta do is put my cursor where I want the math to go, hit insert, and look, it just fires that math right into the Canvas rich content editor. Even better, we're not only obviously about making the math easy and accessible here, look how easy this is inside of Canvas to get right to the alt text. So if I'm using screen reading software, I can see that we'll make the digital math inside the product and we'll also provide the alt text. One last example here I wanted to show, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And I wanted to show this again and one more LMS. So Schoology, Brightspace, we can really make math anywhere. Look, I can open the web toolbar right inside of Schoology. So again, this will open, same, same answer here. Uh, I can go here and type in Y is equal to, oops, missed my uh, cursor there. Y is equal to, and this, let's just put negative four X uh, plus two. And again, click right in that box, hit insert math, and it just fires that math right in. If you're an LMS customer and you're using the LTI, you will know firsthand how much quicker it is to use the web toolbar versus the LTI. But again, we support all, you know, the best thing about the web toolbar, Ryan, really from the LTI, in my opinion, is you get the full experience of Equatio. Whereas in the LTI, you only get five buttons to make your math. So I can use all these buttons here inside of that web toolbar. And, and it's it. so much quicker as well. Yeah. I think the yeah. user experience is so much better because it's just the same Equatio toolbar that you're used to and yep. all the other applications just presented inside your LMS. And I'm very disappointed, Louis, actually, you didn't use the word magic whenever the, the equation popped in there because it is magic. It happens so quickly, yeah. you kind of, you know, it's, you it's, have to it's not magic it. to you, it's magic to me because I'm not quite sure how it works. Ryan's, of course, <laughs> more the developer side, but it really is magic how it works. I mean, it, it's, it's fast, it's super quick. And, and Ryan didn't say this, but like, if you've used the LTI, sometimes you have to hit insert once and then hit insert again. It's just a lot of clicking and we wanted to make this simpler and easier for you. One last example, look, I can open the web toolbar right in a Gmail and I can write my teacher and say, hey, I need some help with my math. 
And I can put something simple like, we'll just make this again. And look, I can copy this, I can grab the image. And of course, Gmail is going to accept any sort of image that you wanna paste in it. I can send a graph to my teacher, whatever I wanna do. It's just really quick, really easy places to use that web toolbar. Let's go to question number two. Um, I think we've wrapped up question number one there. So Ryan, question number two there, can you highlight some of the latest ep uh, updates to Equatio Math Space? Sure, absolutely. I'm always happy to, to show math space as well because it's always so visual as well. It's yeah. always great to show math space because it's so colorful. You've got all those manipulatives in there as well. So it's a lot of fun to show. Um, and I'm also pretty proud of myself today because I did a little bit of prep work here, Louis. And you're going to notice my nice, uh, neat grouping of my tabs in my Chrome window. Right. Um, so hopefully you can share my screen. Yep, you're good. See, the top left, it's not good. Assignments, good. and I've got my teacher view, my student view, so I know exactly where I'm going. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the Rapid Reviewer, which is something that we've added to MathSpace since probably the last time that we talked. Uh, previously in MathSpace, whenever you shared an assignment with a student, um, you would get those assignments back. And if you had, say, for example, 30 students, you would have 30 different assignments in here. Right? Luckily, I've only got two, so I'm not as busy as most teachers. Uh, but most teachers are going to have a minimum 30 assignments in here. And they used to have to click on the first assignment, go and right. score it, give the, the student a grade, close the tab, go to the next assignment, give the student a grade, and so on. So on. If you do that 30 times, that is a lot of clicking. That's right. a lot of consumed time. So what we did is we introduced the, the rapid reviewer. So if I go to my nicely labeled uh, teacher channel, this is what our rapid reviewer looks like. So I asked Louis um, earlier on to go and count up to five pounds using the coins provided. And obviously this, this confused um, an American without the concept of, of pounds and pound coins, but essentially $5, five, uh, five pounds, same basic thing, not monetary value, obviously. Right. And um, so Louis has submitted this assignment to me. I can have a look at this and um, do my, use my usual tools and say, um, yeah, great. Well done, and I can give them a score out of 100. Let's say you got baby on that one, Louis. Uh, real work. Okay, so instead of me just you know closing out of the tab and then having to click on the next assignment, what I can do is I can click send feedback, and I will send the feedback directly to Louis. He'll get the notification on his screen, and as soon as I click on that send feedback button, it moves me to the next student. The next student being myself, um, and I haven't actually submitted a response to this. But if, if you picture, Louis, say I've got 30 students, all I need to do is to hit that send feedback button, and it loads the next math space. And then I can quickly go, yeah, great, leave in some feedback, send feedback, and it loads the next math space again. Um, and I can't remember the exact figures, but Louis, you did a little bit of research on this before, didn't you? Yeah. Just to time the, the difference in it. Do you remember oh, yeah, yeah. what it yeah, was before and afterwards? I, I did. I, I did some uh, some little analytics here, being the math guy that I am. And I thought, I wonder how much time this actually saves people. And it came out to just about just under 66%. So it's two thirds teacher time. Because as Ryan stated, now that you have the rapid reviewer, you don't have to return to the dashboard. You can just access all of these quickly. And as Ryan said, hit send feedback goes right to the next student. It goes right to the next student. So it's really fast. And we wanted to do this work for you to save you teacher time. Yeah, absolutely. Another little cool thing you do as well, if you've got say 30 students and only 15 of them have submitted an assignment, you can click on this little button up here and that will show you all your students and you can jump to a, a specific one and jump back. So you don't always have to go sequentially. You can say, oh, you know, maybe I'll grade five today and I'll do another five tomorrow. So you can jump to individual students as well on the list. Um, I think that's super valuable, something that really saves teachers time. Uh, I can obviously help them get the student feedback back to the student in a timely manner as well, right. which is really important, obviously, for right. students, especially with remote learning as well. So rapid review, I think that's brilliant. I think that's a real great, helpful tool. And um, there's two other things as well I want to talk about, and they're both inside MathSpace as well, but they're from the student side of things. 
Um, so, and again, much like Jamboard, Louis, anytime we talk about mass base, there are two things that teachers always asked us for, and that was infinite cloning and locking mm. of objects. Right. Uh, and whenever I show this, you'll see why people keep asking for it as well, because it is so useful. So taking that exact same assignment, I'm going to go into the student view. And this is what it looks like whenever I've been assigned this math space as a student. So count up to five pounds using the coins provided. So I've got my one pence, two pence, and five pence, Louis. That's what those coins are. <laughs> and the other two are 10 pence and 20 pence. But you'll see, maybe you can't make out on my screen, there's a locked object on the 10 pence. That means as a teacher, I have went in and said, students cannot move that around. So you could use the locked objects for things like questions, or you know, sort of structural elements, like say you've put a table in there and you don't want the student to move the table, you could set that as a locked object. And then I, as a student, can click on this, I can try and drag it, but it won't go anywhere because it's locked. And the good thing about this as well, even though I have you know locked it as a teacher, the student can still use the speech though, so they can still hear what that, that object is and they still get to understand what it's there for but they just can't manipulate it. Um, and that's, that's really useful, especially whenever you're doing, you know, sort of complex assignments. You've got lots of moving parts. I know your assignments, Lou, are always more complicated than mine are. And um, I'm sure you probably use this an awful lot more than I do. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a really, really useful tool in the, in the teacher arsenal. And as I mentioned before, the second thing I want to talk about is the infinite cloner. Um, Coins especially, this works really well with. So you'll notice this icon on the 20 pence is slightly different. This is an infinite cloner object. And that means if I click on this object and drag it around the math space, it doesn't move the object, it creates a copy of it. So if I click the 20 pence and drag, it creates another 20 pence coin. And I can do that again, and again, and again or you might have guessed it, an infinite amount of times. And um, really, really good and really helpful whenever you're counting things like money because then students can physically see that movement. And that's really important for them to, to understand the concept of, of taking it from A to B and also then to count as they go along as well. And once you take a copy of that object, then the student can change it, manipulate it, move it around. And um, of course, we still have our, our text to speech in there as well. So they get that exact copy of that object an infinite amount of times. And unfortunately, again, I am not a math teacher. So my, my knowledge of about how to use these things is very linear. It made sense to me for coins, but I'm sure there are probably teachers out there who can think of, you know, infinite amount of ways to use that cloner as well. Yeah. And uh, that's another thing me and Louis really love seeing how teachers are using this in their classroom. So if you're using this in your classroom, you've got a really good idea uh, or you've got a really good assignment, share it with uh, Louis and myself on Twitter because that's we, we love to get that feedback and we love to see how this is actually put to practice in, in the real world. Right. Hey, you know, Ryan, to be fair, what you're locking and you're cloning, I thought you were kind of giving the North America guy hints as to actually get the answer for this. So I thought no, it's locking no, it. I thought if he's locking it, that can't be in the answer. So that's why I went the other way. <laughs> I wasn't going to give you the easy way. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you had to put the work in to this. Right. <laughs> Show all my work. I get it. So, hey, uh, so question number three here that came in. Uh, see here, my school is back to in-person learning, but some students have chosen to continue remote learning. This is very true at uh, my two children's schools. What are some ways I can use Equatio to create engaging content for students and classroom activities? So, see, uh, just before I, just before we we get on with that, yeah. maybe there's there's a question in there from somebody uh, wanting to know um, if we are going to work in Pear Deck. And oh. um, that that is a really really good question. And um, so at the moment we don't work in Pear Deck because they won't accept images in a certain way. Maybe you know differently, uh, but that is something we are actively looking at uh, because. Pear Deck, really popular platform, and I love it. I think Pear Deck's fantastic, uh, but it does fall down in terms of math. So that's something we're absolutely looking at. We really hope to have a, a co issue in there at some stage. 
Yeah, great question, uh, Miss Walter. So we, we do hope to have some Pear Deck, uh, a math inside of Pear Deck. Any chance there will be an insert audio feature available in the math space? That is a very big question. And so that's not something I want to answer as a, in a definite yes or no, Megan, right now. Uh, but hopefully that gives you that indicator of what we're uh, planning for the very near future. Uh, I think audio feedback and for kids, especially in remote learning, is so vital. Um, and with MathSpace in particular as well, it's a really good opportunity to have sort of multimedia feedback mm -hmm. for students. And um, so that is absolutely something we're looking into, Megan. Really good question. Yeah, yeah, we've definitely had that on our roadmap. I'm a math space novice. Did you create those coins by inserting diagrams or are there more? Okay, uh, you know what? I can take this one if you want. If you if you want to share my screen so I can help Miss Oliver there. So Miss Oliver's question is actually leads right to question number three, which is fantastic, which is, hey, how do I make these math spaces? How do I engage my kids, give them interactive opportunities? So if I click on new space here, uh, so Miss Oliver, what Ryan did is he went down here to our shapes drawer. And if you look right here, we'll put eight commonly used items here. But right here is where the magic actually happens here, Ryan, where when you click here, look, guys, you have just a world of possibilities here. So I believe what Ryan did was chose Coins UK. This did this for me the other day, Ryan. I was in a demo and I clicked on Coins and I don't know, I clicked and I dragged and see it's making those dots. Um, so I refreshed my browser and then I tried... Yeah, now I'm not having, so why did I take this, Ryan? <laughs> I should have had you drop the coins in because I keep getting, uh, I'm not sure if, maybe I'm because I'm You can on. Show, uh, show on the list of coins and the different Yeah, uh, yeah. denominations. So basically, you have in the here, maybe because maybe I'm on a, a, a Mac here, I wonder if my Windows device is uh, a little more cooperating. So here's the list of coins in the US, coins Australia, coins New Zealand. And you can see here, Miss Oliver, we have tons of geometric shapes algebra tiles, cones, 10 frames, pentominoes, uh, distributions, Venn diagrams, I mean, STEM tools such as the, the diodes, resistors. Um, so lots of really good stuff here for you to pick and choose from. The other great thing, Miss Oliver, is look right here. And this actually is answering question number three. So if I, if I don't like what, you know, text help or Equatio is offering inside of MathSpace and I want something different from my shapes, I can go right here to import files and I can drag and put images right in here. Um, so I can go ahead and add items here and drop in different things that I want to use for creating engaging mass spaces. I'll give you an example here. Like I created this Pi Day activity, you know, some time ago back in, uh, I think it was last March actually. But I mean, Miss Oliver, you can imagine that you know, when you look at this particular math space, like we don't have, you know, most of this stuff in our drawer. I ended up bringing in a picture of a pie. I ended up bringing in pictures of, you know, uh, those, I almost said the actual brand name, Ryan, we got to be careful. Uh, the actual <laughs> no, peanut no, butter no, candies. On, on Mondays, Louis, that's the, the real. Yeah, the peanut butter candies, the marshmallows, the, you know, the, the chocolates. So um, we can bring in items here to create engaging content. You know, think about all the different ways that we can put things in mass space, uh, whether it's, hey, there's another example of dragging coins into a piggy bank, you know, and oftentimes, you know, you're seeing these elementary examples, but I want you to know that it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be just for elementary. We can have trigonometry examples in mass space. Here's a better one here than that one I just showed you, but I created this trig example and helped a salesperson with a demo that wanted to see this for a trigonometry class. Um, we, you know, any types of symbols, any types of objects that you want to put in a math space are very fair game uh, for creating, engaging, uh, and exciting math spaces for students. I'll show you one last thing here. Uh, I'm going to open up this real quick. And this is an example of like, uh, this is actually from my son, to be quite honest with you. He was given a piece of paper and I thought, you know, I wonder if we could take this, you know, plain piece of paper and create an engaging mass space activity. So my son isn't just getting out the folder, the paper and the pencil. What if he could actually show and drag and show his understanding or make and have, look, we wanna make math fun. We wanna make it engaging and interactive. 
So like if for this example here, number three, right ways to make 15. Well, what if we gave him some objects in mass space and said, again, look at this, tying back question two, Ryan, we got the cloning features here. So I said, look, if we want to clone this, I need to clone these objects so my son could drag as many objects as he wants to show 15, right? And this is the actual piece of paper. So this is what he turned in, but what if we could make it a little bit more engaging and fun for him? So uh, just, just wanna kind of open your mind and kind of expand things for you. Look, you guys all teach different things, right? And we think about, you know, complex STEM items like galvanic cells, which Ryan and I are no experts in this particular area, but here's a great math space for like a chemistry class, for example. So, you know, we're talking about oxidation and the chemical compounds. All of this was created with Equatio. Um, so lots of good stuff here. We hope this will at least open your, your minds to things you can create inside of mass space um, because there's, I mean, really the, the opportunities are endless here. So let's finish here on question four. So Ryan, I'll let you close this out. Can you show any new features that are coming out soon? So kind of what is our development team currently working on uh, to get our users excited as they finish out the testing season, go into summer? Maybe what can we expect in the in the fall when we return to school? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so unless if anybody hasn't guessed by now, we are we fire out features all the time. Um, so the answer to the question, what features come out soon is lots. Lots of really, really fun stuff. But I want to talk about uh, one in particular today. I'm just going to leave my screen about. Um, and that's something we haven't updated in a little while, and that is Equatio Mobile. And um, again, much like Equatio itself, Equatio Mobile is like my, my pet projects, one of the first things that I did when I started on Equatio all those years ago. Um, and it started off really as a, as a companion app. So, you know, just a way for you to get math from the, the physical sphere onto your desktop. And it still kind of relied on you having a, a desktop computer and also a mobile device, so two devices. In a world where some people are struggling to have one device, we're asking people to have two devices for math. And that never really sat well with me. So that's one thing that we, we really want to change with Equatio Mobile. Some of the enhancements that we're going to be doing over the next uh, month or two um, is to add, very, very simply, add a new document button on the Equatio mobile. That will allow people to create math directly from their mobile device without the need for the desktop. So we'll still have all that, you know, real time being able to insert your math into a Google slide or into a Google form for your mobile device. So all that stuff's not going away. We're just adding this on top. Um, and so if you're not familiar with Equation Mobile, uh, you can use your mobile device to take a picture of a photo and it will then transform that photo into digitally accessible math, which you can then use to share on different platforms, uh, different apps, in just the exact same way uh, Louis was showing you with a web toolbar earlier on. And you can also upload things from your camera roll as well. So maybe pictures of worksheets that you've already got. You don't need to, you know, take another photo of them. And at the moment as well, you can really only do one item of math at a time. And again, at Equatio, we're all about trying to save you time, trying to make things quicker and more efficient. Because if you can make things quicker, you get the work to the students um, in a quicker way, and you get that feedback back from them as well in a quicker way. So what we want to do is instead of, telling you to crop each individual image. We're going to allow you just to take a picture of an entire worksheet and make that into a digital accessible document with all the, the good stuff as well that Equatio does along with it, with the, the spoken text um, and, you know, the nice crisp, clear lettering that you get as well with Equatio. Um, so on Equatio Mobile, once you create a new document, we're then going to allow you just to save that to your mobile device. And then you can share that with any apps that are on your mobile. So that you're, you're not tied to having to have a desktop. You're not tied to having to be signed in with a Google account in two different places and all the complexities around that. Um, and we're also gonna take this opportunity as well to do a little bit of a, a UI refresh on this and bring it into, into 2021, past 2020, thankfully. Um, and uh, just sort of, 
you know, put a little bit of sheen on it as well, I think. Yeah, that's that's really really great, Ryan. I've seen some some early early uh, uh, you know demos of this, and I think it's really really going to help users to be able to not just simply take a box and and just scan one problem, but to be able to take an entire document. So really excited for for what the potential is for Equatio Mobile. And I'm going to be completely honest here, Ryan. I remember when I first saw mobile for the first time ever. That I, I definitely use the word magic. I'm like, how do you do that? How do you <laughs> how do you take a picture of something and then like magically send it over to the Google Doc? But really, mobile for everyone, just so you know, is really for those teachers that are looking a to take that handwritten math, make it accessible, so we can OCR that math and send it into a digital document. But the other great thing is, is you don't have to OCR it. You can just take the image. And that way, kids can still submit electronically their handwritten math uh, if you want to see the student handwriting. So uh, that's going to do it for today. I don't see any other questions. So again, on behalf of Ryan and myself, it's really a, a great opportunity. I don't see Ryan nearly as much as I used to, so it's good to catch up with him and have a. You're welcome for that, Lou. You're welcome. <laughs> no, no, I, I miss you, man. So uh, we'll have to do this again sometime down the road. Uh, you know, we really appreciate you guys joining us live. And then those of you that want to follow us uh, or reach out to us via Twitter or reach out to text help uh, at text help on Twitter. Uh, certainly we can get those messages uh, funneled down to us if you can't find us individually. So we are here to help you guys. We hope you enjoy the rest of your spring here. Uh, and most importantly, I think everyone's looking forward to a great summer. So uh, keep in touch. If you have questions, like we said, don't hesitate to reach out. So have yourself yep. a great rest of the day. Take you care. Have fun. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thanks, Ryan. Bye.